Hello, peeps. <laughs> Apparently, third time was not the charm. Um, if you were trying to watch me live at 3 or 3.10 or 3.20 or 3.30 or however many times it was, um, yeah, I don't know what's wrong with the camera. I restarted, I redid, I reloaded, I, and it just, the more I tried, the faster the camera froze. So, I have no idea. I'm using the same camera now. It seems to be uh, doing okay, so I guess we'll see in the end. Um, I'm going to try to recap what I had said. It's so much easier doing it the first time. Um, so now I'm not going to be able to remember if I said something or not. Um, if I just imagined I said it or... So, who knows? I might just repeat myself. But I'll, I'll give my best to uh, to regroup and make this uh, an enjoyable video for you all. So, what we're making is the accordion photo book. Um, you had to look at the little video I made on the... that I posted because um, I gave away the one I made. But, and I've got everything pieced together to make a second one. But it is that easy that I didn't make one in between. I thought, this is easy enough, I'm just gonna make it live. So then I will have a sample. <laughs> so we're gonna build it together. Now I have a couple things that are slightly prepped because I was, I got that far before the camera started freezing on me. Um, we're gonna start. I can I can use Canva and do all sorts of fancy things, but sometimes the easiest thing is just you know a notebook and a and a pen and away we go. So we're starting with making the backing, and then we'll do the inserts. And I'll just try to give you what I know about the stuff as we go. These pieces are six by six, which some some Stampin' Up DSP now comes already cut six to six by six. But if not, you're basically just you know cutting up your twelve by twelve into a couple pieces. And then a couple pieces of chipboard or cardboard. So these are the pieces that back various different things. Any of our specialty papers or um, in the paper pumpkin kit. Like I just save these pieces of chipboard. But any good kind of slightly thick piece of cardboard will work for this. Um, if you have super thick cardboard, then you're gonna have you might have to make your piece a little bit bigger because it will uh, you'll have gaps in the in the corners which you don't want. Uh, but yeah, if you're using this thing is what an eighth of an inch. Or sorry, that's not an eighth. That's a sixteenth of an inch. If you are um, keeping to the four and a half by four and a half piece of cardboard and six by six, you should be good. Now, this paper is not directional, so it really doesn't matter how we do it. If your paper is directional, when we get to the assembly stage, it matters. At this point, we're just putting, we're just covering the backs, so it doesn't really matter. You don't have to worry about up and down, but it will matter later, and I'll hopefully try to remember to mention it then. So what we're gonna do, and I, and I already did it on that one, so we'll just uh, we'll just start again on this one. <laughs> this time I'm not gonna flip this over. Um, adhesives are really a personal choice thing. You want a strong adhesive. So glue dots or uh, just your regular seal is probably not the best project for this because it's meant it's meant for lighter use, I guess, like a card. This this um, this book is so fun to open and close. That it will be open to close and open to close and open to close repeatedly, uh, probably by you before you even give it to anybody. <clears throat> so you definitely want a stronger adhesive. I love tear and tape, love it. So I use it all the time. I find it clean, I find it easy, and I find it super du super durable or strong. Uh, I would imagine Seal Plus would also work. And then I do know a lot of people when they're making 3D 3D or bigger items like this that will use. Uh, the Tombow, the liquid glue. So this is white glue. And this, this glue does give you a little bit more, I don't know, 10 or 20 seconds more to, you know, adjust your pieces, fiddle a little bit, make it where you want it to go. With tear and tape, you basically, you put it down and that's that. <laughs> like it, it's a one-time deal. Um, I, I guess I like to live on the edge because I use tear and tape all the time. I use it, anytime you're using like heavy cards, I, I put it behind ribbon if I'm trying to keep ribbon in place. Um, I use it for everything. I love tear and tape. I will use glue, but I find when I use the glue, I end up with glue all over my fingers, which just makes it more likely that I'm going to end up with glue all over my project as well. So that's what we're trying to avoid. Okay, so uh, so I put it around the edge, and I put it down the middle. You can, if you're using white glue or whatever, however much you want, you can just put it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to center this, and I realize my uh, camera's at a bit of a weird angle. You could measure. Again, I like to live on the edge. So I'm eyeballing. And I'm going to put this in the middle. 
Now, as I'm putting this down, maybe I didn't say this before. See, this is my thing. I think I said it in the earlier version. Did I say it this time? This is the outside of the cover, right? So make sure that you are sticking your cardboard to the side you don't want to see. The side you want to see should be on the other side. Now, because we, we, we're going to fold this all over, and all we're going to do is go around each end, and we're going to fold it over. And we're going to do a little bit of mitering because we don't want it to be too bulky. So this is why you want it centered, so that you have a nice even corners. Uh, most of this piece, most of like the inside of this is going to get covered up, and you're not really going to see it. So that's really, we folded it over. It's that easy. Now, to miter, look, I'm actually going to use a ruler, which I never do. <laughs> This is what you're trying to do to miter a corner. You're basically, and this is a carpentry term, um, you're basically cutting this chunk off. And, and if you see, I guess you could do fancy hospital corners. If you see, if you were going like this, see how much paper we have here? Like there's just, there's a lot of paper coming in here if we try to fold both these things over. If we did it this way and then this way, it's just, you're, there's a lot of paper. So by cutting out some of the bulk and if you do it I said you're just trying to hit it evenly so it's not like cockeyed one way or the other now when we fold these corners together the two lines line up and in this case I went a bit a bit too strong because it didn't quite line up normally you can get this to line up and then there's no bulk so it will lay flat now when we go to put our card on we're going to go almost to the edge here um, but because I cut a little bit more than I wanted to, I'm going to show you a trick. And then I'm going to show you how we don't do it as much on the next one. So in this case, I'm just going to take the piece that I cut off, which I cut off this way. I'm just going to take this piece and I'm going to put it, and it doesn't even matter that it's backwards because nobody's really going to notice. And I'm just going to glue it back down in here to fill in the hole. Basically, you just don't want to see... Um, the cardboard right so now when I put this down I'm trying to bring it closer to the camera for you oops I'm totally off screen it doesn't exactly cover but it's it's not gonna make a difference I would also say that when you're doing it you put it on the side where when you open the book you don't notice it as much I pulled it right off screen so that's what we're doing so when we do this next one okay so that's the fix so in order to do it we're just gonna go we still want we still want to be using this as our kind of our landmark but we're just gonna go oops just before that and I'm still just gonna freehand cut it because that's how I roll and you see this one <clears throat> and it, again it's not exactly straight square <laughs> I hit my, my trimmer it's a little bit off but all of this is going to be covered so really what you're trying to do is just try to get a flat corner here right so <clears throat> that's what we're doing the other one because I was using the ruler and trying to get fancy I just cut too close to the corner so we'll just go back a little bit cut at an angle and then when, like I said, when we fold those pieces, Bob's your uncle. So we're going to cut all four of these off. We don't need those now because we did it right. So, again, glue is your choice. Uh, I'm just going to put this down in my corners. Uh, and I guess it's your... If I was using white glue, like the liquid glue, I would I would probably just put it on the flap. But because I'm pulling this down here, and I want a nice tight seal where I know the book is not going to be covered, I'm just putting it on the edge. And I am stopping just a little bit back from there because I know I screwed up that one corner. So, I'm just going to take this. I should have, I should have, while I was off, since I had to redo this anyways, I really should have finished the other one so you didn't have to necessarily watch. But the other one is half done, so it'll go much faster when we get to the other one. Oops. Got little pieces out of the way there. So we're just going to fold and make that nice and snug. We're going to pull our covers down. And like I said, we just sort of pre-crease this paper. Um, but even if you did it just as you were doing, it would probably be fine. So you see how much flatter and smoother that is than if we hadn't mitered out that extra. And this is, so this is now either the front or the back of our book. So like I said, in, the, in my previous attempts with the video, I got as far as gluing this piece of paper down. So we will 
See, and in this case, I'm mitering before I even folded the things, which doesn't really matter because I'm really just using the corner as the point to go on. And then I'm just pre-folding so that when I do it with the glue, I don't like stick it down. Again, just bend it over with your fingers. And just so I can show you, because we can do it different ways, this time I will just stick it on here. And like I said, this tear, the old, the old, I can't remember what, what it was called. The, it was the, it was basically the 3D tape, but the old stuff was, had to, it, was it had a stronger backing on it. It had this orange clear plastic backing. And that stuff stuck like crazy to everything. It was so staticky. So when you peeled it off, it was hard to peel off too. You had to cut with scissors, and then you had to peel the backing off. And then that thing just, you were like flicking your hands like crazy and trying to do it. Um, somebody did come up with, I eventually saw the, the answer to the, the problem was, and I normally, I used to, I used to all the time uh, craft on top of a, uh, like a, one of the pieces of paper, one of the placemats. You could put like a little bit of snail in the corner so that when you peeled off, and you can still do it with this too if you don't want to float around. So when you peeled this piece off, then you stuck it like this and it stuck to the snail in the corner of your mat. And then when you were done, you just popped it all off. Uh, but yeah, this tear and tape is so much better because these pieces come off so much easier and they're not staticky. So there we go. That quickly, two covers. Now, like I said, this is non-directional. When you go to put your book together, you're going to want to make sure if it was trees that were growing like this, right? you know, pointing to the sky, that when you put it together, you put both books the same way, so that you don't end up with, uh, you know, one tree growing up and one tree somehow, you know, hanging from the sky. So, that's our front and back cover done, and like I said, most of this is going to get covered up. Now for the fun part, the middle pages. Not the middle ages with knights and castles, middle pages. So, <laughs> I don't know why, I cracked me up. So these pages are eight and a half by eight and a half. Regular paper is eight and a half by eleven. So basically, you're cutting a strip off the bottom. Then we're going to score this. Now, I'm showing you my top tip again. <laughs> this is the cutting blade, and they fit into the the trimmer. And I mean, the old Stampin' Up trimmer was very similar. There's a little notch right here, and you can basically come and you just kind of like you swoop it up put up and down is how this comes in and out so if you're at all afraid you're going to accidentally grab the cutting blade when all you're doing is scoring just take the cutting blade out while you score then the only blade in the machine is the scoring blade and then you don't have to worry about wrecking your project by cutting the wrong thing so now in the video I used all the same um, I used the evening evergreen the luscious evening evergreen paper um, to do this. I'm going to try this with three because I'm curious what it's going to look like but I also know that it will um, be easier to take pictures to show you the difference um, of which piece is which. So what we're going to do now and I was going to do what I was talking about apparently I can't concentrate that much is we're going to take each one of these pieces of, from the middle and we're going to score them the same way. Now I'm going to do this three times so I'm doing them while I talk. But you're gonna you're gonna do a plus, so you're gonna score it at four and a quarter. Then you're gonna turn it, and you're gonna score it at four and a quarter. So you're basically getting the plus in the middle. And then you're gonna line up the tips of your paper, the corner, in the groove of your scoring table or cutter, and you're gonna do one diagonal corner. So when you're done, I I'll be able to get it to focus that close. Maybe not. But you're going to have a plus sign and one line going across. And we're going to do that on all three of our pieces of paper. Now, the original card that I saw that Tamara had made, I think she had five sheets in the middle. So that would give you a lot more places to put your pictures and stuff. Now, I'm gonna, I'll, do, I'll recap this. I, I, I did it in my original video. But, um, when I started doing this, I needed to make an over-the-top card for like an extraordinary lady who was moving on to a, a permanent job opportunity. 
And I was trying to think of something where a lot of people could sign it and it was like a wow card. So this happened to come along at just the right time to be able to fill that need. But originally this was whoever inv invented this. And it was uh, Tamara, my lovely friend Tamara, who showed it to us just a couple weeks ago. But I do remember seeing it years ago um, at a demo event at Tammy's house when it, it was just if demos come up with a project or see a project um, they share it so that everybody can you know benefit from what they've learned or what they've figured out uh, and the Stampin' Up! demo community is very generous with their talents and so I, I do remember having seen it years ago and thinking what a great idea for you know make a brag book for grandma or whatever but or grandpa my, my dad would love that um, but I hadn't seen it in a while and then I saw it again a couple of weeks ago and it looks like it's the perfect timing. Um, so you have to, you can decide how many pages you want based on what you're doing. This one I'm just doing it as kind of like a sample. I'm making it with a sort of a purpose in mind so that it makes more sense as a sample. But uh, year in review, if you want to make a, a book and make it 2021 and put all the highlights of 2021. Might not have been one of the best years ever, but there was still lots of good that happened. And I think you got to focus on the good. So let's make the 2021 highlights or even just big events, or even just things you overcame, like, there's lots of things you can do that way. Uh, all your kids' pictures with Santa, right? Make as many pages as you need that you can have all the pictures with Santa, and you can put them all in one place, and then, you know, when he's older, you can embarrass him with all the pictures. Um, your school pictures, this is what I thought I have. I have school pictures for my son. He, he ended up having one at his daycare, where it was, like, the individual pictures and a picture of the daycare group, and then kindergarten through uh, grade 8 we have pictures. I do also have from kindergarten to grade 6 a picture of him on his first day of school with his teacher. Once he hit grade 7 he told me I was not allowed to, to do that anymore um, and convenient for him I guess because I probably would have still found a way but uh, conveniently enough for him the uh, it was a pandemic and I still have never been inside my son's school because unless you have a reason to be in there, like last year nobody was allowed, period. This year they're allowing you in as long as you're vaccinated, as long as you have the mask, you follow the protocols. But they still want you to have a good reason for being there because they're just trying to protect the kids. Uh, my son's school goes grade 5 to 9. So the two younger grades uh, were not eligible for the vaccine. Uh, so I totally agree. Keep the kids as safe as possible. Um... But anyways, yeah, so I have pictures of his, him, like his actual, you know, his picture, his class picture, and then some pictures with um, with his teacher. So you could make them into like a school book and, and you know, find a way to group all of those into here. Um, I, I, I have some thoughts on pictures when you do them later. And, and I would imagine I am not the only one who had the thought about cutting up pictures, but uh, I'll show you what I mean when we get to that stage. Uh, what else would we do? We could do it for a holiday. So if you wanted to have like Christmas 2021, you could have all your Christmas pictures in one book. Or if you went on a trip, you go on a week-long road trip, you know, seeing the biggest ball of string and stuff, <laughs> or whatever it is, then you could do it, um, make it like a little like road trip journal or whatever. Because you can make this, you make this whatever you want. So you could have the pictures, but then you could also add in the hybrid of, um, like having some journaling pages on it and various different things. Uh, all the grandkids first, all their sports. I mean, I could have my son's, you know, career in hockey, <laughs> which would be very few pictures. But I do have pictures of him, and he hasn't really had any team photos or anything yet, but I'm sure that's coming. Okay, so while I was rambling on, um, I folded all of these. Now, basically this was on the score lines, right? So we made a plus, and then we made one corner. Now, when we put the book together, the book is going like this, right? Your pages are going to kind of open like this. So what you're going to do is you're going to alternate these, the way you fold this book. You know the game you played when you were a little kid where you used to go like this and you used to write the things in and with the answer? This very much reminds me of that. So for the first one, we're going to push down on these two corner folds. Okay, we're going to push down on them and we're going to... And it does get easier. And we're just going to bend them in. No, actually, it's much easier to do when you're not trying to do it on camera. And we're going to make this card fold like this. Now, once I've folded it, I am going to give it just one more score because it'll keep it. 
So this is basically how we're folding them, right? These are the two flat pieces, and this is what we're going to adhere together, and then these are the, the hinges that kind of come into play. So we are going to make, and we're doing, to me the easiest way to do is do them all the same, and then we'll just, some of them we're going to flip. But for right now, we're going to make them all this way. Now, my other tip for you <laughs> is to get some kind of a bulldog clip. Um, I only have little ones on my desk, but uh, to me, this is a bulldog clip. I don't know, I think various people call them various things. Uh, butterfly clips, I think. So one of those, if you have the right size. You don't want anything too small that's going to make lines on it. I happen to have one of these butterfly paper clips, which is is a big clip. And it's also very loose, so even when I slide it on like this, um, like it slides on and off. It's not making any kind of an imprint. But if you do that, then those pesky pieces of paper that want to jump and bounce everywhere... Um, We'll stop doing that. So I realize now as, I'm, as I was doing it not thinking about the camera, I did it the right way. So this is what I do. Take the angled one and push them in, right? So pull up on the, these where my thumbs are, pull, I'm pulling up and I'm kind of pushing in on the middle one. Because once you've made that crease once, then this thing will crease down very easily. Okay? And it, it's it really, it's going to be trial and error to find the best way for you to fold this. But I'm going to do it one more time and show you. But you're going to find whichever way works for you. So I don't think it matters which way the. Nope. Okay. So again, I'm where my thumbs are. I'm kind of pulling up on that seam and I'm pushing down on the on the diagonal, right? And then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull up on these ones and I'm going to push down on the diagonal. And then I'm just going to fold it under and squish it all together. So what we end up with is, like I said, as many inserts as you want. I have three. Oh, see now, now the hardest part of the project. What order do I put these in? Because I've never done them with three different colors. Well, who am I kidding? I've done it once before, but um, I've never even seen them with different colors. Hmm. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take one where the, the card is popping up, one where the card, we're going to flip it over, put one where the card is popping down, and then one where the card is popping up, right? So we're going to layer our pieces on top. So what we're going to see is two green pieces, move that over, and some yellow, and I don't know if that's what I want. I think I want to do it this way. I think I want to see more green and red and less yellow. So the pieces that we're going to glue together, like I said, are these flat squares. So once you figure out if you are doing, if you're doing it all the same color, it's easy. You just put one up, one down, one up, one down. Um, okay, so I've decided on my colors. So I'm going to do it in this order. So I'm trying not to be too confusing. Okay, so this one is folded in, right? And, and the, the point is popping up. Let's, let's go with that. The middle point is popping up. On this one when it's all folded together, the middle point is down, right? Like I'm making a, I'm making a bowl out of this basically. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put adhesive on this and we're going to stick this square to it. Okay. So that's what we're doing. It's a little harder to see the score lines once it's down, but we're adhering these two squares together. So again, you can use the white glue. And in this case, the white glue might be, especially if you're doing it for the first time, or you're not the crazy crafter that I am. Um, because yes, you'll have a little more leeway to make sure it folds. I'm going to show you what I do to make sure I can fold it. Because the trick with, if you if you are using the tear and tape, like I said, you want to go the, the neater route. The tear and tape is definitely it. Um, you just got to learn the tricks of when to squeeze your paper together and when to just lightly float it above the adhesive until you're ready to put, put the pieces together. So... Definitely do the edges. I want nice clean edges. I don't want gaping, so I always make sure I have something on the edge. And then if it's a big enough space, I just stick something across the middle. If, if I really thought this was going to get a workout, I'd, I'd make an X in the middle. I'd put some extra stuff, but I'm pretty sure, this, and based on how much adhesive I put on the last time, and how many times I opened and closed that card, and then everybody who signed it opened and closed that card, this was sufficient to keep it together. Okay, so here's the trick now. 
we're going to put this together. So I'm going to hold this. I'm going to crumple up as much as I can so I have a nice good grip on it, right? So I'm basically using the folds as my grip. So I have just this nice square that I want to adhere to. And the reason I have it slightly bent and not laying perfectly flat on the table is because I need to be able to make these bends when I, I think I'm doing this upside down, but it'll be fine. Um, I need this card to fold once it's glued together. So if I make it flat and I get too close to the, the score lines, I'm not going to be able to bend the card. So here's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm matching up my spots and I'm going to make sure that this card will also fold as I drop it before I squish the two pieces together. Right? So that I want to make sure that my score lines will still work. And in this case they will. Right? Like I could fold this one, I can bend and then once I do that, now I'm going to put it down and I'm going to push the pieces together. So now I have my two pieces. And you see how they're going together, right? So now I need to put my other one on top of this one. And so when I started to do this last week, and then I realized that, well, one, I cut the paper the wrong size the first time, but um, that the, as you're trying to do this, if you're following along live, it is, it is uh, like you do it the first time, you watch, you figure it out, and then when you actually go to do it, you want to you know, fold a couple more times and try a few more things. So I guess the one advantage to my camera being temperamental today is if you need to right now, you can pause and rewind as many times as you need to to see how this card goes together. But I assure you, <laughs> at least for me it was that way, um, once I actually had the pieces scored in, in my hands in front of me and I watched how they were supposed to go together because I watched the replay after I had watched it live going, what? Um, it, was, it very quickly made sense to me how they, how they fold and go together. So you're basically, you're folding all the pieces the same and then you're going to flip over every second one. So some are going up and some are going down, <laughs> there's my thing, and then you're just joining the corners. So this is what I have, right? This is my up one. This is my down one. So this one that I'm going to add on to the corner here, and I'm doing the same thing, right? I'm bending this enough that I can keep those crease lines. So this one now, because this goes down, right? The yellow is a, is a, is a bowl or a valley. Then the green needs to be the mountain. So this corner is going in here. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm just lightly laying it in there so I can make sure that I can fold my pieces over and as soon as I do that and I know it's in the right spot now I can kind of give it a little squish and then I can lay it on the table and give it the good rub so that it all stays together and I was definitely right by using three pieces of paper you can definitely see how they link together better than when it's all one dark color <laughs> so as you can see so we started with the red then we have the yellow then we have the green and so the yellow is the one you see the least of. Now I'm not 100% sure that I like the different colors. I would like it if I could have like stripe, almost like striped. Uh, but I think if I, and I think I could do that if I had more pages. But with three pages, I'm getting an odd number. But it's not it's not totally bad. It is bright and cheerful. And then because we folded this a few times, it should fold up pretty easily. But and then as you notice, it all just folds together into one book. Now. I'm just going to give it another little another little crease to keep it flat. So, now we have our book. Now we need to put our book on our covers. And then we need to put pages on our book. So here's basically what's going to happen. And this is the part where it matters if this is directional or if you've stamped something or written something on the front. So keeping your, keeping your pages like this, when you squish them all together, and then you just kind of have to give it a little turn to make it straight. So this is the op the most open corner is your upper left. That is the upper left of the front of your book. So we're going to put one on the back. And I'm going to show you this just so you can see what I meant earlier. You see how when we put this over top, make sure it's even, you don't see very much of the backing. So right, you'd only see a little bit of the corner that's off. So whichever corner it was, where I told you make sure that the bad corner is you know, not the most obvious corner. 
It's right there. I had to look at all eight corners to figure out which was the one that was bad. So this is... I can't make it focus that close. Nope. Uh, you can barely tell. All you can see is a little bit of a corner, and because I put the white behind it, you can't even really. If you didn't know to look for it, you wouldn't even know it was there. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to put the back cover, and we're going to put the front cover. And that's how we're going to make our book. Now, in the instructions, it said to have a 24-inch piece of... 24 inch piece of ribbon or twine. You want something that's not going to fray easily on you and that is going to tie well. So here is the thing. In this sample book I made, the one that was in the video, I, I had the back ready to go and I put this piece of ribbon and I centered it in the middle of the back and then when I glued the back down the ribbon basically got trapped in there and then when I went to tie it I tied it in a bow right in the middle. Now I had put a card on the front and it had a nice little saying on it and some little hearts because we love her. And the bow was kind of part of the design on the front and it covered part of what it said so it was like a bit of a reveal. If you, if that's how you want to do it, great. Uh, the original book I saw actually didn't have anything on the front. It was just the bow, right? So if you have a big enough piece of ribbon and as I'm looking at this ribbon now, uh, the ribbon is, is rather sheer and you barely see this ribbon. <laughs> But that's okay, because the point is just to keep the book closed. Um, I just made, just because I wanted to try something new, and I haven't tried this yet, so I guess together we're going to find out if it works. Um, I wanted to make it so that the ribbon was not tying a knot in the front of the book, but it was going... I'm just trying to line that up. It was going to go so that I could tie the bow on the side of the book, right? So the bow would just kind of be here. So you have two options for doing that. You can do it underneath the back and then underneath the front covers, right? So we're going to stick it in between here and you won't, all you'll see is the tie at the side. And then I just made like a little thing like, hey, I'll put this on the front. But I'm still undecided, <laughs> quite honestly, if if all of the ribbon is inside of the book, so you don't see it at all, is it as secure as if some of it is around the outside? So, I guess time will tell, because this is what I'm going to do, is I'm going to bury the ribbon in the book, and I'm going to make it so I tie the bow at the side. Uh, like I said, if you want to do it the way I did in the other video, you can just put it in the middle. It's just a matter of, of centering your ribbon. Where, wherever you're going to tie the bow, take your two ends, and center it so that wherever you're going to tie the bow, that's where it evenly meets, right? So just make your decision. Like I said, I'm going sideways. So I've lined up my ribbon. Let's see if we can see all of that in there. I've lined up my ribbon, so it's going to go underneath here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to hold that down so I don't screw it up. I am going to <laughs> I'm going to use my cleavage to hold the piece of paper while I put the butterfly clip back on it. Yep, that's probably more information than you guys wanted to know. Um, and, that, and again, this is just so I'm keeping my book in the right order of how I want it. I want this loose upper corner, so I always know what the upper corner is. But I also, that thing is very springy. So I'm going to find the edge of my tape. Um, okay, so I'm using my finger because now I know where it's going to go. So I'm just pushing this out of the way a little bit. Like I said, I love to use this piece of tear and tape behind a piece of ribbon. On cards, on all sorts of things, I will do this just because it holds it nice and it's linear and it fits in most ribbons. So I'm gluing the ribbon down just to make it nice and secure. And then I am going to go... Now, remember when you put the book on, how we were in by... What would that be? That'd be about an eighth of an inch. Okay? So do not put your adhesive all the way to the edge or you will have one heck of a mess to clean up. So go in just more, just a little bit more than an eighth of an inch in from the edge of the of the book and put down your adhesive. Again, this could be liquid glue. That's fine. Um, and if you're doing liquid glue, you're going to stay far enough back from the edge that when you get the squish that you get with liquid glue, that you don't squish out farther than the, the book's going to show. And then you can also um, squish a bunch into the middle. Right? I'm just going to again, put one piece just because it's a big open square and I feel like 
There should be something in the middle. Okay, so I've got all my pieces. I'm just going to not pick up the corner of the book and actually just pick up the piece of the tape. Um, yeah, I should, one of these times I really should try the Seal Plus because it's a very strong adhesive as well. Maybe I'll do that on the front cover and then we'll have a test case. Uh, it's a very strong adhesive and it's also super easy to apply <laughs> and way cleaner than the liquid glue. Okay, key thing here. Do not adhere your book with the clip on it. <laughs> okay, so remember I said this is our upper corner, right? So this is the loose corner on the red. This is the one that's all sealed up. So this is going to be the way our book opens. So again, liquid blue will give you a little bit more timing. Uh, for me, when I'm lining something up, I know that I have an eighth of an inch around. And the most likely place you're going to see it is, is uh, on the bottom. I, I don't know why. When you look at stuff, I guess because the card's at an angle, you see the bottom clearer than the top. So when I put something on, that's what I'm doing. And right now, again, I am hovering over my tape. And I'm going to go in so that I have an eighth of an inch on the three sides that I can see. And I'm going to make sure my stuff is straight. And it's evenly spaced. And it's an eighth of an inch. Because if I'm, if I'm correct on three sides, I have stuck my finger to the book. Um, it stands to reason I should be correct on the fourth one. So, there we go. I'm correct on three. Now I'm going for it. <laughs> now, like I said, liquid blue, you'd be able to like look and adjust a little bit. I did pretty good. Uh, I think people, when they look at this particular project, they're going to be looking at the, um, the pictures in it. I just realized my mistake. <laughs> they're going to be looking at the pictures in it. And... Um, so they're not going to, um, I don't think they're going to look around the edge and measure and like that's what's going to catch their attention. Okay, so hopefully nobody was following along with me that didn't want to have to like wing it on their book. Because what I just realized <laughs> as I'm doing this live is if, because and this is what made me think of it, I thought, okay, well, I'm going to put the front cover on, but I'll just glue this ribbon down now. So what happens if I glue the ribbon down here? The book will not open. <laughs> so I cannot do that. So in this case, the, really the ribbon can only be fastened to one side of the book because if you fasten it to both sides of the book, the book won't open. So it does, it's, not, it's not the end of the world. It just means that this piece of ribbon does have to go on the outside of the book. Um, and it just means that my front, oh no, that might still work actually. Oh, okay, there we go. New idea. Okay, whatever you do, do not adhere your ribbon on the inside of both covers or you will not be able to use your book. Okay, so I have an idea for the front now. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing we did on the front cover as we did on the back cover. And again, <laughs> let's just put that guy so it quits popping up in my face. Um, we're going to go in just a little bit more than an eighth of an inch in from the edge. And I'm going to give you the reminder again, if your paper is directional, because you still have time to save your project um, and not have to rip the cover off. If your paper is directional, make sure you look at how the back is <laughs> so you know that the front matches in direction. Like I said, in this case, and maybe, and maybe that's like the top tip I could give you, don't pick directional paper for the for the cover and then you won't have to worry about it. But yes, this is your last chance to make sure that your front and your back cover, if they are directional, are going the same direction. And I think if you had ended up putting it on backwards on the back and so you adjusted it on the front, it's fine. It just means your colored pages on the inside would be in a different order, which I think in most cases probably doesn't matter. Now, here's my tip for if you're trying to line these up. If we, if we try to flip this over and line it up, we're not going to be able to because we're not going to be able to see what we're doing. So I'm using two fingers to hold the springy insides of this thing from popping up again, right? So these, so my left hand is holding those like that. And I'm going to use, I have my fingers hanging over the edge here, right? So when I go to line this up, I'm using my fingers to guide me so that I can line up 
all of the sides. And I'm using my fingers to tell me where to put the edges so that the book lines up. And then I'm just squishing it together. Because you don't, you can't really see what you're doing. So if you're using your finger kind of like a ruler, right? So I'm kind of like using the edge of my finger like this to line up the edges of my book. And as it turned out, I lined it up pretty good. Okay, so now, test case. We're going to test it as we go. So we know that we can tie our ribbon like this on the side. Why did I want it on the side? I have no idea. I just did. Um, on my slippery book that's sliding all over the place. So we have our ribbon on the side of our book. I like the way it looks, I guess. That's, maybe that's why. It looks good in various different places, but I kind of like the way it looked on the side. And then it left the front cover open for whatever you were doing. Okay, so there's our book. So we know it works. It's nice and closed. This is not tied very tight because it was slipping on me. But um, And then you could do what you want with the front. So here's what I'm thinking. And because I like to live on the edge, I'm just going to do it as we go. I think that... I can put some dimensionals on this cover that I made. And in my mind, I was envisioning it as, hey, you got a new pet. You want to like keep it like a pet book instead of a kid book? Because <laughs> um, sometimes pets are just easier than kids. Um, then we could do it this way. So I think that the ribbon will just free flow underneath this, but will not completely come out. Um, I'm trying to see if it's long enough. This will make sense. I'm talking like a half thoughts right now, but so I'm going to put this on here because this this is not gluing the ribbon down. This is just holding the ribbon on the front cover. And if this fails miserably, which there's you know a 50/50 chance that it will, um, the worst case scenario is it just means when we tie the ribbon, we're going to put the ribbon across the front of this. So really, it's not a big deal. But my thought was, if I put it like this. When I open this book, and I open this way, is the ribbon long enough? I'm gonna hold on to it for a second. That it can stay, it can stay fed underneath that little cover. No, it's not. See, unfortunately, it's not. So that's not gonna work. But that's fine. So, oh, I think I did my book upside down. I did too. Um, my thought was when I opened it like this, if the ribbon was long enough, it would stay underneath there, but it doesn't. But there's your book, nonetheless. And it's too big to fit into my camera screen. So there's your two covers, which in this case I need to, um, I'm going to show you another. While we're at, uh, if you need to know how to fix, um, that's not going to work. If you need to know how to fix um, mistakes, I can always tell you. I think this might need to go on the other way. And you know you can just slide your scissors underneath and just like doop 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 and snip all those dimensionals off. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to leave it for now for in the interest of time. But uh, it might have been a good idea to test run it because I think I did put my I think I did put my book upside down. But we're going to do it like this. And like I said, the worst case scenario or is not really that bad in this case because all it means is the ribbon is going in front of my cute little picture. So. That's fine. It's, it's a bit of a reveal. Um, and, and there's nothing saying you have to put anything on the front of the book at all. But it's, it closes up nice. And it opens up. And it, and it, it So the book lines up straight one way. And then when you open it, it actually opens kind of at a bit of an angle. So now here's the inside part. We're in the home stretch, peeps. Um, here's the inside part. And here's what I'm going to tell you. When you're making, this is the part I forgot to tell you the first time. When you're making inserts for here, and I'm going to use these white ones because they're nice and bright. These are 4x4 four four squares, right? So the, the squares that you can see the easiest are, or that you could do, they don't require any cutting. They're just a 4x4 four four square. You can fit four of them, right? So if you wanted, if you wanted to do 12 years of school, I think you would need five of these, five of these would give you, if I added two more sheets, it, theor theoretically it should give me two more of these big squares, because you can also do, I can't do it right now because those aren't glued on, they'll be everywhere, you can also do the back side of all of these, right? So depending how you want to do this, how many pages you want, how you want to lay this out, here's the big white squares. Now, on these pieces, 
you need to take your squares and cut them corner to corner diagonally. These are four by four pieces because when you fold the book, these are all loose, so we'll see how to, we'll send them everywhere. But so because when you fold this book back up, these need to bend, right? So you and and to just crease them is not going to be enough. You're going to have a very bulky book. So you actually need to cut these and put them in. Now you're, you're going to cut them and you're going to kind of line them back up again. There's not going to be a big gap in them. But when they fold, it will fold on the crease line. So some of your things are going to be whole pictures and some of them are going to be half pictures. So like I said, with the card it's or with stamping, it's the same thing. You need to figure out your direction. When you open your book this way, how do you want it? If you had everything lined up where like the text was written like this, it would be slightly sideways. But not everything's going to work to write text this way. Okay, so in the interest of, I'll just use my pen. So if I wanted to make a happy face in my corner, I can, right? That's an easy one to line up. If I wanted to write happy birthday, I have to go way up here to write happy birthday. So that's a rather, rather large gap in between just to have enough room, right? So Maybe it is easier to write happy birthday this way, and it's just, you know, slightly askew. So when you're laying out, before you start sealing stuff in the middle, kind of factor that in. It's the same as these these pictures, or these diagonals. When you're doing them, like it's, they're all going to be the same, but decide how you want your picture, like if your picture is going to go down here, is your picture kind of, pointing this way and you're doing it or are you somehow managing to make your picture big enough that you're cutting directly out of the middle and getting this diamond shape right now here's the thing with pictures so stamping and writing and words that's easy um, I decided that my son would probably be less annoyed with me if I used pictures of him when he was very young than he is now so these pictures and, and I what I did uh, just because I, I don't have a ton of printed off pictures. So this is a 4 by 6 picture. It's roughly 4 by 6 Quite honestly, I was doing it on the computer and it's in centimeters, so it was roughly 4 by 6 So this is the 4 by 6 picture. And I think with, you know, printers nowadays, you get a really good job on the printer. <laughs> so this is just printed on, on cardstock, or on, uh, not cardstock, on printer paper. You could print it on cardstock, um, but it's not necessarily printed on photo paper. So if you don't want to destroy some of your pictures, um, just print them like this. This, this I call this his risky business picture, which if you're old enough to remember that movie. So here's the piece. Here's the four by four piece. So this is what part of the picture is going to go on here, right? So you can use like a template and do it this way. So I'm going to make this picture four by four. Well, now that, I, now that I did that, I can just cut this at four. Okay, so this is my four by four picture. Now, here's what I meant by... I'm starting, I'm starting to get quite the pile of stuff on my desk. And here's what I meant by the directional part. So this is this picture is kind of off to the side, right? Like he's... And I guess it depends how you hold the card. And I mean, it's a card. It's a piece of paper. It's very easy to move. So when you're looking at this book, you could just do it like this, right? And now the pictures are all lined up. Or you could look at it sideways and they're like this. But unless you make the picture big enough that you can somehow cut it, like you blow it up, which is only going to work for certain pictures. So your pictures are going to be slightly sideways. Now here's where it gets a bit of a sticky wicket. Love this picture. And I realize this is a, a, a printed off picture of my son. But I still have a problem with taking this picture and here's where I said don't do this until you've figured out your layout. If you decided that this picture absolutely had to go here, the crease is here, right? So you need to know that this is the corners you cut, like from corner to corner, not this way, right? That's why I said don't don't cut your pictures ahead of time. But here's the problem I have. <laughs> it's just a picture. I know it's not actually my son. But I have a hard time cutting his head in half. <laughs> I know. Call me weird. Now you could... But, but I don't want to. Like, I just, ah, nope. <laughs> so, and that's and that's a personal thing. Not everybody's as weird as me. I, I get that. But 
here's here's my suggestion for pictures. And if you wanted to, like I said, if you wanted to journal it, I don't I don't off the top of my head. Uh, when my son was younger, he wore his sunglasses everywhere. He loved sunglasses. He wore them everywhere. He wore them in the house sometimes. So who knows what that could have just been like an everyday occurrence. But if you were doing this, um, I do know that my son has been sick just about every single Halloween of his life. Uh, don't know why. Just happens to be the timing, I guess, of when Halloween comes, when a school year starts or something. Um, but I do know that he was two years old in this picture, and that he wore the costume during the day, but he was not feeling well. He never went trick-or-treating or anything. He had way more fun handing out the treats. So if I wanted to, to write Halloween 2010, I guess that would have been, um, on here, that I could have a, a combination, a hybrid, as it were, of his picture and a little blank piece of paper so that I could write Halloween 2020, uh, no trick-or-treating this year. Um, and actually, if, if you wanted to know the whole story, I could tell you the whole thing about how projectile vomiting really is true because that's what I remember about that Halloween. Um, but maybe that's not what you journal. So whatever, if you wanted to write, then maybe you just need like a half picture. Or even in this case, if you wanted to put like just a little bit of a label, there's lots of green space in this picture. So knowing that I need this picture to be 4x4, four four, I can make it, sorry, I had this in my hand for a reason, I can make it, but I'm going to make it 4x4, four four, but I'm, I, I know I'm going to cut it in half, so I can make sure that where I mark, where I cut my 4, all I'm doing, and it's still, like it still, you know, weirds me out a little bit, but less so than his head, yeah, I'm going to trim a little bit off of his costume. I won't think of it as his feet, I'll just think of it as his costume. So in this case, I'm going to trim my picture 4x4. Four four. I think this is actually a little bit wider than 4, so I'll just give it a little extra trim on the bottom. So I'm going to... There we go. This little guillotine was a joining thing at one point, and uh, just love this little, this little cutter. It is so handy. And funny enough, the original design was for memory keeping and scrapbooking. So, I still don't like to cut pictures, but I had a lot easier time cutting this picture than I would have cutting that picture. So here's what we're going to do now, right? We're going to put this one here, and it does have a split in it, but we're going to put it like this, because most of him is still in the one side of the picture. And then, because I have all this green space over here, um, if I had planned ahead and actually... We're just going to use this because it's what I it's what I can reach. <laughs> so this is the picture, and we're just going to put this here. So let's pretend this is actually just a little label that says Halloween 2018, or a bigger label like this that says Halloween 2018. No trick or treating this year, under the weather as usual, right? So we can have, you know, you have, you have many options of doing it. You can put. Um, DSP on the inside of the book if you'd like to. I could put this picture like this, and if I had some cute uh, cowbells or milk bottles or I don't know, something cow related or even just something Halloween related if I wanted to draw in the Halloween thing, I could put a, a triangle of DSP in here. So when I say it's going to take you longer to decorate than it is to build, um, I mean that just because there's so many possibilities of what you could do with this book and how you can fill it in. Um, and like I said, this is one side. If you flip the book over, look how many more pages you have. If you add pages into the middle, look how many more. Uh, it's endless. And when this book when this book goes together, I should do that. I keep doing with the exception of this one fold that seems to want to be a bit of a temperamental. Um, this book goes together with just pushing on the corners. Like I said, except for that one fold, it goes together very easily. But you'll notice it's not even a very big book. Like, with just three sheets in it, it's not very big. There we go. So, you could easily... I mean, you could make this six, nine sheets in the middle. You just... You do the same thing. You, you score them the same. You fold them the same. And then you put, you know, mountain, valley, mountain, valley, mountain, valley. Up, down, up, down on how you assemble them. And you're just fastening the one corner square. If you're going to make this book a lot bigger... Um, your ribbon's going to need to be longer, 
right? You, you don't want this ribbon to be too short. If you if you make if you tie it the first time and then you're like, ooh, nice, I'll nice trim these little flag ends off. Then the the next person who goes to tie it has less to work with. And then eventually you're just gonna if, if it starts to fray or anything or you need to trim it, it's just gonna end up being a disaster. If you really wanted to do my my fancy technique, which did not work, and run the ribbon under here and then have it enough that it didn't come out, you would have to make it a lot longer and then I would think you would also just put like a knot in the end of the ribbon. And both of these things you could just make like a little knot and then it would stop from sliding out of there. But in, it was a good theory, it just didn't work. So um, decorate the front, incorporate the ribbon into the decoration. Um, in this case, like if I wanted to, I could put, you know, Gustin Felix, it's got a cat on the front. That happens to be my, my two newest um, nephew cats, <laughs> Gus and Felix. Uh, so you could put their names on here if you wanted to make a picture book for them. Um, it was really, we were trying to get a dog for Christmas, so if we, we, if we could, we could have had a whole dog book. Um, I like this one because it had the fishbowl on it. But yeah, just uh, as many pages as you want and then adjust the ribbon accordingly. Make sure the ribbon's only adhered on, on one of the covers so that you can actually still open the book. And then, uh, yeah, make sure that you open your book and decide on your layout before you start cutting stuff up so you don't have to uh, print and reprint and do too many more of your pictures. And there you go. Uh, if you want to put in the comments any ideas you thought of that would you could use these books for, um, they would be great. Um, I do not exactly understand, but another one just came to me too. Um, there's like, well you can have journals, but there's also prayer, diary, prayer diaries, I think they're called, or prayer journals where you put Bible quotes on one side and then you journal on the other side. Uh, you could have those in here. Um, yeah, I bet you there's all sorts of things. So what are your ideas for doing them? And uh, if you make one, post a picture or a video so we can all see how it all turned out. So there you go. Thank you guys for uh, hanging in there. That was probably a bit, oh, that was a long video. Uh, that was mostly because I ramble. Because um, the actual project itself, if you, were, if you weren't listening to me ramble at the time, goes pretty quickly. And just uh, just because it's so cute. Ta-da! There's my son. Um, there's my son, ooh, a good 10 or 11 years ago. Um, yeah. I would like to see how, how yours turn out. Uh, apologies for the many attempts at trying to get this thing going and still not knowing why my camera kept freezing. But thanks for hanging in and coming back to watch the replay. And uh, happy crafting, everybody. I hope your books, uh, I hope your books turn out well.